How's it going guys? I'm Josh. I recently bought my first ever full frame DSLR camera, the Canon 6D Mark II. So today I want to take the opportunity to explain to you what full frame cameras actually are, what all the hype is about them, and if they are right for you. So let's get into it. Now quick preface, you're going to be seeing a lot of my example images in this video and you should never ever be swayed to buy camera gear because you like the photos you've seen taken with it. Now the reason why is because you can take beautiful photos with just about any camera. I've taken some of my Prada shots with a Canon T3i, a very entry level Canon DSLR. It's the photographer, not the gear. So don't be swayed to buy this camera because you like my shots. However, do feel free to be swayed to follow my Instagram, link to that over here. Jumping into this, a quick overview, it is all about the size of the sensor. A beginner camera or an enthusiast level camera are known as crop sensors because they have a smaller sensor, also technically known as the APS-C or the APS-H or micro four thirds sensors. They're all a little bit different, but they're all under that crop sensor category. The next step up, we have the full frame camera. This is what a lot of professionals use. And the next step up, we have medium format and large format cameras, which have even larger sensors, of course. And this is why people drool over Hasselblads and the X1D, which is a medium format camera. I know that got a bit complicated. What does it all actually mean? Now, the bigger the sensor, the bigger the image you're actually taking. And with that, the more zoomed out you actually are. Because crop sensor cameras are literally cropping the image between 1.3 and 1.6 times, which is a lot of lost space. And that is the most general overview possible, but let's dig into it a little bit more with the pros and cons of full frame. So number one major pro is that people like it big. The bigger your image, the more flexibility you have with things like printing. This is a printing size chart, and let's actually break down the types of cameras we have. With a crop sensor camera, you're probably shooting between 18 and 24 megapixels, which can still print you out a pretty solid image. Now, my full frame camera, the 6D Mark II, can shoot a 26.2 megapixel image, which gives me even more leeway. And then to take this even further, we have nicer full frame cameras like the Nikon D850 or the Canon 5DSR, which shoot close to 50 megapixel images, which give you that much more flexibility for printing massive, massive prints. You also have to bear in mind cropping because when you crop an image, it obviously gets smaller. So the larger the initial size of your image, the more you're able to crop without sacrificing quality of a print. So does this actually matter? Do you need a full frame camera for bigger file sizes? Probably not, but it depends on what you're doing. Now, if you're just posting your photos online on Instagram and doing small to medium sized prints up to say 20 by 30 inches, which is actually pretty big, then a crop sensor camera is gonna do you just fine. Because as you can see, you can go pretty far with a 16 megapixel camera. Now when you're doing commercial work or larger size prints, that's when having a full frame camera really does become beneficial. Now I've been shooting with a Canon 70D, which is a crop sensor camera for the longest time. And normally it was perfectly okay for doing prints. However, the only times it would really become problematic is when I wanted to crop the images a little bit more than just a bit. And as soon as I got to be doing these larger crops, the image would become a little bit too small for larger size prints. And I print up to 20 by 30 inches, which is fairly big. If I were to have taken these images with a full frame camera, I'd be given much more leeway as far as cropping goes before sacrificing too much quality. And reason number two is low light. This is probably the biggest reason why people like going full frame. Full frame camera sensors have more of these things called photo sites on them, which are light sensors, which allow the camera to perform better in low light with less noise. And for those of you that don't know, if you've ever taken a photo at night and you see the photos a little bit grainy, that is noise. And the larger your camera sensor, the less noise you're gonna get. Now this all comes down to your ISO. Basically you can shoot with a much higher ISO while still getting pretty good performance and it not being too noisy or grainy. So for example, this photo I shot at ISO 8,000 and this is with a 5D Mark IV, but still that is one of those amazing things because with my 70D, I wasn't comfortable pushing the ISO past 3,200 because anything past that and it would just get 
way, way, way too grainy. Now this is huge, huge when you're shooting stuff like astrophotography or anything outside when it's not super bright out or even indoors when you don't have that much lighting. You can just push your camera to much higher ISOs comfortably without the photo getting too grainy and that's huge. This also means you can get more done with less light and we're gonna exemplify this in my bathroom with an iPhone flashlight taking a selfie. I know that sounds ridiculous but you'll see how with the 6D Mark II I'm able to get a much better result without too much grain whereas it's not quite as pretty with the 70D. Notice the grain when you zoom in a little bit. And number three, your lenses are gonna be more zoomed out. Now this is a bit of a pro and also a con. On one hand, because your lenses are more zoomed out, you're able to get closer to your subjects and as a result, get more depth of field, which is great for portraits. Now, if you have full frame camera lenses like the Canon L series lenses, then you are gonna be good to go and you're getting more out of your lenses once you go full frame. However, if you have crop sensor lenses, this is the major downside because some lenses meant for crop sensor cameras will not work on a full frame camera. Other lenses will work, but you're only gonna get so much out of them because, whoa, you see that? That horrible monstrosity is what happens when you use a crop sensor lens on a full frame camera. They're not fully, fully accessible, so I'm gonna actually have to buy a new full frame wide angle lens soon, and full frame lenses are definitely more expensive. So what I recommend you do is if you think you're in it for the long haul and you're going to be using a full frame camera eventually, when you buy lenses, make sure that they'll work with full frame cameras because it sucks to have a lens like this that is not gonna cut it all the way. I actually made sure to do that with a lot of my L series lenses and as a result, all of my lenses except this one are gonna work just great. And if you've bought the 50 millimeter 1.8, which I recommend to everyone starting out in photography, that lens will also work with full frames, which is awesome. A couple reasons why I bought the 6D Mark II. So first of all, I really like the flip out LCD screen. And that is huge for me because it allows you to get higher and lower angles without having to actually get your head into the viewfinder, which is amazing when you don't wanna lie your entire body on a dirty New York street. That's Awesome stuff, you can just be on your knees. Additionally, I like how small and lightweight it is. A lot of full frame cameras are much larger and heavier than crop sensor cameras because with the larger sensor and more features comes just a larger body. And some of them are really, really heavy, which I don't like at all. Fortunately, this one's not too bad. Additionally, this is one of the cheaper full frame cameras on the market right now. Now, one major problem I have with the 60 is the lack of 4K video. This seems to be commonplace with most higher level cameras these days, but this, this camera is still lacking, unfortunately. But all in all, I'm very satisfied with my purchase. The low light situation alone makes it worthwhile for astrophotography, low light street photography at night, and all that great stuff. I'm, I'm just stoked on this camera. And if you're curious to check out this camera or the rest of my camera gear, I'm gonna put a link to check out my website with links to all this stuff and reviews down below. And finally, after all of this hype for the full frame camera, I wanna wrap this up with some advice for you guys thinking about making the upgrade. Most importantly, do not rush into buying a full frame camera. I didn't buy my first one until over six years of shooting photos. Now, one of the main reasons here is just because camera gear, as you probably know, is absurdly expensive. And if you wanna get the most bang for your buck, I highly recommend you invest in lenses first because a crop sensor camera with great lenses is gonna do much better than a full frame camera with, with garbage lenses. So first build your lens collection and I think those will help you improve your photography skills way, way, way more than just investing in a nice camera. And when the time is right and you feel like you're finally outgrowing your crop sensor camera, you will know. And if you don't know, then you're probably not ready to go full frame. The other main reason not to rush into it is because nice camera gear is a crutch. The nicer your camera gear is, the better the photos you're gonna take. And it's not hard to take a beautiful photo with a telephoto lens, but you gotta be ready for this camera gear before you buy it. And I think when you have very default, not incredible gear, like an entry level Canon DSLR, which is still a very good camera, you are gonna learn the basics of composition and, and develop your own style. And then when you're finally ready, you're gonna make these upgrades that'll make much bigger of a difference once you're ready to make them versus if you rush into them. So take your time, get comfortable with whatever equipment you have and know that you can take beautiful photos with really any camera, even if it's a Barbie camera, I'm sure 
take a killer shot with it. And on that note, we are losing some serious light and I feel like I've rambled enough for today. So last thing I wanna say is if you were a beginner photographer, as I know many of you are, you can check out my website for more tips on gear to buy and my personal recommendations for a first DSLR to buy. I personally really like the Canon SL2. So more information on that on my website, links to all of that down below. And if you also wanna check out the 6D Mark II, which I've been bragging about for this entire video, link to that down below as well. Also, I'd love to hear what you guys think of full frame cameras and if you think you're gonna buy one soon or if you think they're totally overhyped and not worth the money. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think and I'd love to, to hear your thoughts. Anyway guys, if you liked my photo examples, feel free to stalk me on Instagram for more photos or buy my prints and hang them in your room to trick your friends into thinking you have better taste than you actually do, which is really kind of what life is all about, isn't it? Anyway, I swear that was, a, that was a half joke and I'm not that vain or nihilistic. Anyway guys, be sure to subscribe for more photography videos if you found this helpful and thank you so much for watching. I will see you eventually. Time to go learn my slides for my project tomorrow in school because college is a thing.